Welcome back to my abiding journal, or hello if you're new. Today, we are going to create an interactive element for our journals called a waterfall card, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can create your own. So go ahead and grab your journals, and before we get started, I want to share that this is actually part of Junk Journal January, hosted by Meg Journals in collaboration with Get Messy Art, and this is day three, and the prompt is throwback. While many people decide to do junk journal January in a separate notebook and create spreads for every single prompt, I personally like to use the prompts to inspire me in my existing journaling practice. Many of you know that one of the things I've been committed to doing is monthly journaling in which I create a spread for every single month of all the highlights. And I wanted to do my December spread and incorporate this prompt for Junk Journal January into it. I thought that December would be the perfect time to do the waterfall card because I have so many photos for the holiday season and the waterfall card is really a great way to be able to incorporate a lot of additional elements onto your page because you're essentially adding multiple pages to your journaling in the form of tippins. So I've gone ahead and selected some different papers that I might want to use. I thought it would be fun, since this is Junk Journal January, to do it in more of a junk journal style by repurposing a lot of papers. This one is from Daphne's Diary, which is a magazine. But I've also selected some papers like my old wrapping paper that I had used for this Christmas, as well as an old bag and some other papers I had lying around. To create your waterfall card, you're going to want to start with a long piece of paper and this is going to be your mechanism that is going to operate the system. So with that long piece of paper, it doesn't really matter the size, I did mine 3 inches wide and then the length of it doesn't matter at this point. And then I fold it in half so that way I have my halfway point and from that point I'm going to measure out one fourth inch for as many cards as I want in my waterfall card system. In my case, I decided to do five cards, so I've measured out five one quarter inch sections. Next, we are using those one quarter markings as our guides for where to fold our paper in the form of an accordion. To make this a little easier, if you use the edge of a scissors to score the paper while being careful to not cut all the way through, I actually did that on my first version of this and had to start again. So just so that you have a nice score line that you can more easily fold along, this is more important if you're using a sturdier piece of paper. Then, once you have all of your accordion folds ready to go, you have completed this part of the process, and now it is going to be time to actually make all of the cards you're going to put onto this system. And in this case, as I said, I used a lot of different papers and just cut them to size. I decided to do 3 inches, since the mechanism is 3 inches wide, by 4 inches, some of them I did a rough edge by just ripping the paper, and other ones, as you're going to see, I decided to do a rounded edge. It doesn't really matter. You can do all the same paper. You can round the edges for everything. You can leave them just normal straight edge. It's just a matter of having cards that are about all the same size. While I have made waterfall cards in the past, this is the first time that I decided to try to add a pocket to the system and I love the way it turned out, so don't be afraid to experiment. Now we are ready to attach our cards to our mechanism and you can see here that I'm going to just tape along. You could also use glue. You just want some kind of strong adhesive. 
on your mechanism where your score lines are and then figure out the order that you want your cards to be in before putting them down so that way you have a nice pattern of papers especially if you're using different styles of papers and then you're just going to layer your papers one on top of the other using those fold lines as a guide for where to put the next piece. Once we have secured all of our papers to the mechanism, I then like to just take a moment to fold all of the papers back just to reinforce those fold lines and make sure that everything is nicely secured. And now we have our system and you can see that that piece that was left over from the mechanism, that is what you are going to be pushing up on. And because that is what you're using to push, I like to reinforce it with a really sturdy piece of paper. So I have a nice strong piece of cardstock here that I am just going to attach to the system and have it hang over the edge. That way it's more obvious that this is an interactive element and that you're supposed to push or pull on this part of the element and can follow the instructions after I write push here on this little edge. So now we have a little handhold to operate the mechanism and then all of the cards will follow suit. And then the piece that is in the back, that is what we are going to use to attach it to our page. So I just go ahead and put some adhesive on the back of it and then stick it right to the page. You also could use this just as a little mini junk journal all on its own without even adding it into an existing notebook. So that's something to consider playing around with as well. Now we are ready to decorate all of our mini pages of this journal within a journal. And so I have a ton of photos, as I said, that I'm going to be using as my main decor items that I'm focusing on for all of these pages. These are all of my fun Christmas photos. So this is a nice way to kind of have a mini Christmas album within this section of my December in review page. Once I have added some of the photos, I decided that I wanted to cut out a little dip in the pocket so that way whatever I stick in the pocket will stick out a little bit and it'll be easier to grab it. And I've cut down another piece of the same type of paper I had used to be my insert for the pocket and I'm putting this photo of me and my two best friends on it. And this photo is actually not from this Christmas, and this is where our prompt for today comes in. The prompt is throwback, and I decided to use a throwback of a photo. This photo is actually 10 years old. I like to think I don't look 10 years older than I look in this photograph, but it is in fact from 2013. And I thought it would be really fitting to use this photo this year because I actually didn't get to hang out with my two friends this Christmas because Ben and I were a little bit under the weather on Christmas. You can still hear it in my voice as I'm even recording this voiceover. But typically every year 
we go to my friend's uncle's house and we all hang out there together and this was the first year in a long time I didn't get to do that so I figured I would throw in a throwback photo of doing that from another year and from a year that is actually before I started journaling so it's really great that I now have this memory saved in my journal and I would encourage you to think about some of your favorite memories that you have from before you journaled and think about how you might incorporate them into your journal now. When memory keeping, we can sometimes assume that we should only be recording the memories that just happened. It should be daily journaling of the day before or maybe a recent trip, but there's so many wonderful memories from our lives that happened long before we even started journaling. So think about what some of those might be for you and dig up some of those really old photos and bring them into your journal. So now comes everybody's favorite part, which of course is adding all of the little ephemera and stickers that embellish the page. Because we are documenting Christmas, I decided to use my Christmas cottage collection that is available on my Patreon. When you join, you get access to all of my stickers. And let's just say there is a lot of stickers. There are stickers for every season, four times over. And we also are creating new stickers each month. And in 2024, I'm really excited because each of our sticker collections are going to be themed after the month. And I just released the January collection, which is going to be so much fun to document throughout the month of January. And I might add, it would be really great to use for junk journal January. And once I have finished decorating, it is time to add my titles and my journaling to put some of the memories in my own words to look back on. And that is my completed waterfall card insert for my December month in review. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that it gave you a fun, interactive idea for your own journaling. I think this is such a fun element to add to your journaling. It really is essentially like creating a mini junk journal insert for your journal and is a great way to be able to add additional photos or ephemera pieces or quotes to your page without taking up a ton of room. And of course, we also have our throwback element for the Junk Journal January prompt and I again would just encourage you to think about your own throwback memories, especially those that occurred before you started journaling and think about how you might incorporate those into your own journal. So that is the waterfall card. I have another tutorial here on my channel that is five years old. Talk about a throwback. If you want to go and watch that for another introduction to this system and how I've used it in the past. The throwback theme actually also is what inspired me to even use the waterfall card because it's kind of like you're throwing back the pages as you flip through the waterfall card insert. So 
definitely use this as inspiration for how you can think creatively about prompts in your journaling, especially if you are continuing to use the prompts in Junk Journal January. I wish all of you who are taking on this challenge and joining the Junk Journal January community the best of luck, and I encourage you to watch all of the other creators' videos in this series. I'll have it linked. And if you are looking for a community and a challenge that is going to continue for the entire year, I want to encourage you to consider joining our monthly journaling club. This is a free community in which we are going to be documenting our lives and our memories one month at a time, just like you see here in my month in review pages. We'll be getting together on the first Thursday of each month in a live stream, and I would love to have you join us. So if you want to learn more about the monthly journaling club, definitely check out this video here, or you might like my most recent video, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.